In our country this year is special. 70 years ago the Red Army saved the earth defeating the fascism. And this year is the year of literature in Russia. I want to tell you about Konstantin Mikhailovich Simonov, the man who was born 100 years ago, on the 28th of November. Why have I chosen this person for my work? Because Konstantin Simonov and the Great Patriotic War can't be separated. Konstantin Simonov was a brilliant poet. He wrote many famous poems. Comrades in arms, wait for me, the house at Vyazma. He was also an outstanding novelist. Trilogy Dead and Alive, 20 Days Without War. Konstantin Simonov was a journalist from 1935 to 1969 and a war correspondent. They were often called front correspondents of Krasna Zvezda from 1939 to 1945. And at last he was a real warrior. Konstantin Simonov described the life of war correspondents brilliantly in the song of war correspondents. From Moscow to Brest, there is no place which we've missed to cross with a lake, tablet and a gun, of course. Yes, war correspondents wrote reports, took photos and made films, but they also, together with Red Army soldiers, fought against fascists. The last half of 1941 was a time of defeat, retreats, despair. In his poem to Alexei Surkov, written in July of 1941, Konstantin Simonov describes these hardest days of the Great Patriotic War. Remember, Alosha, the rose of Smolenshina, remember the rain and the mud and the pain, the women exhausted who brought mink and peaches and clasped them like babies and breast from the rain. The whispering words as we pass them, God bless you, the eyes where they secretly wiped away tears, and how they all promised they would be soldatki, the words of old Russia from earlier years. We know you'll come back, said the fields and the pastures. We know you'll come back, said the woods and the hill. Alosha, at night I can hear them behind me. Their voices are following after me still. I'm proud that the mother who bore us was Russian, that the Russian I'll fall as my ancestors fell, that going to battle the woman was Russia, who kissed me three times in Russian farewell. Konstantin Simonov wanted to say, we will overcome all the difficulties, we will win. In February of 1942, when the Germans were being driven back from Moscow, Pravda published a poem which immediately won of the hearts of our people. It was, wait for me, soldiers cut it out of the newspaper, copied it out as they sat in the trenches, learned it by heart and sent it to their wives. It was found in the breast pockets of the killed and wounded. In the history of Russian poetry, it would be hard to find a poem which had such an impact on the people as Wait For Me. The poem is probably one of the most famous war poems ever written. Konstantin Simonov wrote it at the worst period of the war. The fascist army was just 30 kilometers from Moscow, Leningrad was under siege. The situation looked hopeless, but it wasn't hopeless, and Konstantin Simonov was writing about it. Wait for me, and I'll come back. Wait with all you've got. Wait when dreary yellow rains tell you you should not. Wait when snow is falling fast. Wait when summer's hot. Wait when yesterdays are past, others are forgot. There are many translations of this poem into English. Lawrence Olivier a famous English actor chose the translation that is the nearest to his heart. Wait for me and I'll return. Only wait very hard. Wait when you are filled with sorrow as you watch the yellow rain. Wait when the winds sweep the snowdrift. Wait in the sweltering heat. Wait when others have stopped waiting, forgetting their yesterdays. Wait even when from afar no letters come to you. 
Wait even when others are tired of waiting. Wait even when my mother and son think I am no more. And when friends sit around the fire drinking to my memory, wait. And do not hurry to drink to my memory, too. Wait, for I'll return, defying every death. And let those who do not wait say that I was lucky. They never will understand that in the midst of death, you, with your waiting, saved me. Only you and I will know how I survived. It's because you waited, as no one else did. Besides poems during the Great Patriotic War, Konstantin Simnov wrote more than 50 essays and short articles, which were published in Krasnaya Zvezda. They talked about the days of our officers and soldiers in combat, and at rest, in joy and in sorrow. And in every walk people felt the real truth, the truth of a man who had seen everything he described. In his letter to Sarah Hartman, Konstantin Simonov wrote, While at the front, first of all, I was trying to find the facts demonstrating the endurance of our people, their heroism, their trust in victory. I was trying to find the facts of their growing martial skills. Of course, I could not put all the materials of my diaries in the articles published in Krasna Zvezda. But in them there was the material that our people needed a lot. And I was one of many war correspondents who tried to write about the things that they saw themselves. It wasn't easy, it wasn't safe. Many of us were wounded, some of us perished. Simonov's most famous piece of wartime fiction is a short novel, Days and Nights, which was published in 1942. The story is very simple. In Stalingrad, in the dark days of late 1942, an officer and his soldiers defended three half-ruined buildings for 70 days. With their backs to the Volga and the Germans only 60 meters away, they fought, on in rain and snow and icy cold. They ended daily bombardments, tank attacks and hand-to-hand -hand combats, all to hold the three buildings which, to them, represented their motherland. They lost their friends, demonstrated incredible bravely, and during it all, the officer even found time to fall in love and get married. They fought and won. It was one small victory in Stalingrad, but with other small victories, the Red Army turned the German tight and possibly won the war as much as any single battle won it. As a war correspondent, Konstantin Simonov served in Romania, Bulgaria, Yugoslavia, Poland, Czechoslovakia and Germany, where he was present at the Battle of Berlin. After the war, his collected reports appeared in notes of a war correspondent. When watching documentary films about the Great Patriotic War and World War II, realize how dangerous the job of war correspondents was. Without them, we could miss many important things and moments of our history. Home is something that you carry in your head. It lives within the heart forever. And so I know, no matter where I go in life, I'm always going home. The chimney smoke that spirals in the air, the smell of life when someone's waiting there, I carry home. With me everywhere And I'm forever heading homeward Memories fall Like pages from a book They cloud my eyes 
everywhere I look As long as life is mine for me to own I'm always going home Home is something that you carry in your head It lives within the heart forever And so I know, no matter where I go in life, I'm always going home. Believe in life, believe in life and home. Believe in love, believe in the unknown. And I believe. No matter where I go, I am always heading homeward. The summer wind, the winter bitter cold, the autumn chill, when there's no one to hold, can make a man feel lonely. And alone, and so I'm going home. Home is something that you carry in your head. It lives within my heart forever, and so I know no matter where I go in life. I'm always going For Konstantin Simonov, the highest idea was always friendship, and its highest expression the totally committed sharing between men which is perhaps only possible in war. In 1960, visiting New York, he said, I don't know how others may see it, but for me, human friendship is the most precious feeling on earth. That feeling has its greatest strength when times are hard, and in war, times are very hard. 